Hey there, I'm Mr. Terry, I'm a high school history teacher. Welcome back to another History Teacher X video. All right, I thought I had to class it up with this one because I gotta stay on pace with Legal Eagle. So expect a very sophisticated commentary video today. This video is called Rights You Didn't Know You Had and Probably Don't Want. All right, the original video is gonna be linked down below. Make sure you support that. And if you like this video, give it a like. Let's get started. I'm hoping I look like a, a lawyer. I don't have the hair like that though. We tend to think of laws as restrictions, things that you can't do, or things that you're forced to do against your will. Clean up your room, stand up straight, pick up your feet, take it like a man, be nice <laughs> to your sister, don't mix beer and wine ever, and oh yeah. Don't drive on the railroad track. Film. That's, That's just common sense. But did you know that sometimes the law can actually lift these restrictions and give you freedoms to do things you wouldn't otherwise be able to do? Good. Yes, sometimes the law can give you rights that you don't even know about. Not that you'd necessarily want to use some of these rights, but still, let's talk about some of those rights that you didn't know you had. Okay. So I'll be interested, to know, yeah, to know like how deep this goes, because like if it's just going to be the Bill of Rights, but with a little bit more, uh, you know, specifics about what's in it, that'd be interesting. But I want to know some stuff I've never heard of. That's what I'm hoping for here. All right, and I hope to give some history behind some of this stuff. So let's see. Sponsored by Curiosity Stream and Nebula. Now, warning: restrictions may apply. Please see your doctor before attempting any of these freedoms, and more importantly, your please doctor? consult with your attorney. So let's kick things off Medical with liberties? a woman's right to go topless. In 2015, the Fort Collins City Council enacted a public nudity ordinance banning women from removing their shirts in public. I'm not <laughs> gonna read the whole statute, uh, you can do that yourselves, but obviously the law bans women from doing something men are legally allowed to do. A woman's group sued the city, arguing that a female-only topless ban violated the Equal Protection Clause. How did the city defend the ban? Well, for starters, it argued that men and women's chests were totally different, which also means women, okay. quote, have a hallowed sex Sexual status in Western sure. culture. This so I don't know if Fort Collins, where do Fort Collins viewers here? Are, are women just topless all over the place? Is that what's going they on? They tried hard to make it sound as if this reasoning are was based on something other than the stereotypes. People, but this did not go women over using those rights? well. For a gender-based classification to survive a legal challenge, the government needs to show, quote, an exceedingly persuasive justification that the classification is necessary. Okay. That classification must serve, quote, an important governmental objective through means, quote, substantially related to achieving those objectives. So what objectives objective? did the ban serve? Well, Fort Collins said it served two main purposes. First, what? the city's ban would protect children from seeing a female breast, because obviously that's okay. not the defining characteristic of a mammal and mammalian children never see a female breast in their entire lives. <laughs> and second, it would prevent general lawlessness, especially traffic problems that may occur when people <laughs> see a topless woman in public. The man at the uh, driving by the bus stop is going to be like, wait, what, what, what's going on there? <sighs> Ah, uh, yes, men can't control themselves, so let's limit what women can do. The court made quick work of the city's reasoning, although other courts have decided this differently. So does this not mean like, like uh, you'll see women breastfeed in public and they'll have like a blanket or something over the top. So this means like without any kind of covering. Is that what I'm getting? The 10th Circuit thought here? this was bunk and that women's rights were being violated. Fort Collins spent $300,000 on this case yeah, and how decided did this end to up? throw in the towel rather than appealing it to the Supreme Court. So if you live in Utah, Colorado, Wyoming, New Mexico, Kansas, and Oklahoma, you can take your shirt off outside no matter who you are. The right to get... Okay, we got a bunch of states there, including around my neck of the woods. So I've never seen that in public. I really, I've, I've never seen uh, like breastfeeding in public without, like I was saying, without a you know, some kind of blanket over or something like that. So, but okay. But I mean, I guess that's all right though. Okay. Next one, the right to get married by proxy in Oklahoma. You can take your shirt off outside, no matter who you are. All right. The right <laughs> that to applies get to you. You're going to start proxy. doing it. Most people are familiar with the process for getting hitched, get a marriage license, have a ceremony, file the completed license with the state, discover irreconcilable differences, hire a lawyer. By the way, I did not know what historical context dead, to add to Get that. divorced and repeat. Ha. <laughs> but did you know it's possible? to get married without showing up for the wedding itself. Well, if you're overseas in the military or just have something better to do that day, someone else can actually stand in for you mm. in many different states. I have never heard of this happening before. Have you Have you, you guys ever heard of that? I've never heard of that. And that, the, yeah, the first thing that came to my mind would be military service um, to do that, but you'd think nobody would want to do that. You know what I mean? Like you wanna be a part of your wedding. Unless it's somehow gave you some like immediate marital rights. I could see like that, like in desperate need of it. Like maybe the wife at home needs something, some kind of marital status, like immediately. And that 
husband is not going to be back, you know, potentially for years. That's the only scenario I could see somebody doing that. And even then you'd think that would be out of desperation. This is known as a proxy marriage because someone stands in for the other party to take the vows. To do this, you need to authorize your agent to get married on your behalf. Now, most states allow a proxy marriage where one person can't be present. But in Montana, a wedding can take place without either party being present. This is what's <laughs> called a double proxy marriage. Now, to qualify for a double proxy wedding in Montana, at least one party must be on active duty in the military or a resident of Montana at the time of the application for the license. So here'd be my question with that though. Like, could you just get a marriage license without having that proxy wedding? Or do you have to have some kind of stand-in thing with witnesses and all that? I don't know. That almost seems like it'd be more common than the one where you have one actual person there and then one in proxy. Why would someone want to do this, you ask? Other than the obvious reason that you actually love this person? Well, cold, hard cash, obviously. For service members, marriage can be a great financial arrangement. Right, the Army will actually increase about. your pay by at least $1,200 a month once you're married. Oh, really? Now, the Montana marriage law was first passed in the 1860s, I did not know but that. then poured into the area to work in the mines. The miners didn't have the time or the money to travel home to get their fiancés, so the state passed a law allowing ceremonies to take place without either person being being present. Proxy marriage mm. isn't just for the military, though. Trying to think some historical context here. Didn't like, have the time or the money to travel home to get their fiancés. So I mean, okay, so gold rush, right? The gold rush, you could you be gone for you could be gone for years. You didn't know exactly how long you might be going for or or even survive. But when people started rushing over there, they often did not bring their families. Okay, they did not bring their families. It's not some place you'd want to have a family. Um, this is this is a rough lifestyle with some rough folks. So I could see where that would, I guess, make sense that way. Again, because these miners were often there for years at a time. So the state passed a law allowing ceremonies to take place without either person being present. Proxy marriage isn't just for the military, though. Some states allow prisoners to get married through a proxy. In 1987, the Supreme Court case known as Turner versus Safley granted prisoners the constitutional right to marry. However, the right to marry is also subject to reasonable prison regulations, as long as the regulations are, quote, reasonably related to legitimate penological interests. Get your mind out of the gutter. Uh -huh. ah, come on, we're all just trying to have a good time. This means you notice how how often, you know, these like court rulings and stuff like that, how vague the wording is often where it's just like if it deems necessary or like within the realm of possibility or you know what I mean? Just use a thesaurus there. I always feel like it's it's always meant it's like it's a rule. You'll see that's like a ruling, but often they're like. It's going to be difficult for precedent. It's going to be very open and for for interpretation. And laws do that a lot. Not a laws. Uh, that's why we have judges, by the way, for interpretation of laws. Why you have a Supreme Court and a whole judicial system. Otherwise, you would literally just read the law and okay, here's the law and here's maybe the punishment. But law is so interpretive. Um, that, yeah, you have to have a judicial system as a whole. Prisons can do all sorts of things to delay or prevent marriages. In 2013, Texas simply outlawed proxy marriages, including for inmates. Their main concern was that people were marrying just to convey benefits. And that kind of fraudulent arrangement was featured on people the still do that, right? show Love After Lockup, where a doofus named Vince was going to marry ex-inmate Amber and adopt her girlfriend, Puppy, as some sort of insurance and pension scheme. Oh, gosh. I'm a bold mother... Though three years later, the state <laughs> reversed that? itself after advocates pointed out that the law was in direct conflict with Turner versus Safley. The right to an annulment if you get married on a dare. So you have the right to get married. <laughs> in Nevada only. <laughs> within within Las Vegas jurisdiction there. Because, <laughs> oh man, drunk, drunk marriage is there. You get a dare. I dare you to marry me. Not okay. being present at the ceremony. Fantastic. But what if your best friend Double Dog dares you to get married to that hose beast? So you could still there, win the bet. Like Marty McFly, you follow right. through on the dare. Then you sober up, look at your bride or groom next to you, and say, Oh no, I got married because someone dared me to. You know, that old chestnut. Do you have to have evidence for that? Yeah, no, we I like how. Well, relax. So I've noticed I've only watched what? This is like my third video of watching him. He, he, I feel like in at least two of the videos, three videos or whatever I've watched, he does play into the Jim Halpert thing. I, I like it. <laughs> and he doesn't change because of it, like to avoid 
looking like John, uh, John Krasinski. Because if you live in Delaware or Colorado, getting married on a dare is grounds for an annulment. And unlike divorce, not annulment Vegas? treats the marriage as if it never existed. Annulments are usually only available if there was fraud or coercion or illegality at the time of the marriage. But Delaware and Colorado include a got married as a sort of joke as a ground for annulment. <laughs> All right, here's this. I don't know if anyone thought of this. Most famous attempt at an annulment ever, Henry VIII, right? He wanted an annulment so he could remarry and have male sons, right? Because he wasn't having any. See, that's all he needed to do. He just needed to be born in, was it Colorado and Delaware or whatever he said? Okay, then it could have worked. He could have said, no, I wish I just originally married her on a dare many, many years ago. And then the Pope could have been like, oh, okay, whatever. So there you go. Most famous annulment. He should have used the I got dared uh, defense. And then the Pope could have been stunned. <laughs> By the way, mostly he didn't grant that annulment because he was married to a um, family member of the Holy Roman Empire. Holy Roman Empire and the uh, Pope and the Catholic Church are like this and basically get their power from each other. So that would have been bad politically. A lot of people don't know that about why the annulment didn't happen. It was a political thing the relevant when Henry fully expected to get that annulment, but politics is stronger, man. Law in Delaware is 13 Delaware code section 1506, which includes this as a justification for annulment. One or both parties entered into the marriage as a jest or dare. Now, of course, the state requires some proof of the jest or dare and the petition for divorce or annulment form asks you to describe how and when you learned of the jest or dare. So if you are married for decades with several children, don't expect the court to just rubber stamp your claim oh, okay. that you got married Get on a dare. Years. It should be nullified. It's like, yeah, I was wondering, though, away with did you need people. evidence for it, though? Like, you, <laughs> you have some piece of paper. I hereby double dare you to marry blank. Yellowstone National. No, <laughs> no go backs or whatever. Uh, the right to commit murder at Yellowstone? Okay, I've been to Yellowstone. I'm not going back. Park. Now, speaking of marriage, let's talk about murder. Have you ever... <laughs> Have you ever fantasized about committing the perfect crime? Well, Michigan State law professor Brian Colt certainly has. He wrote a law review article explaining how you could get away with murder in Yellowstone National Park. Colt oh grounds gosh. his argument in the plain meaning of the Constitution. Although Yellowstone is mostly located in Wyoming, about 9% of the park Montana. is actually located in Montana, and an even smaller portion, about 50 square miles, is located in Idaho. Yellowstone was established in 1872, so cool. uh, long before these states were added it's so to the weird, Union. And when the states were admitted, each super ceded volcano. over exclusive jurisdiction of its portion of Yellowstone to the federal government. And both Article 1, Section 8 Thank you, 8 Teddy Roosevelt. Law. Teddy Roosevelt really kind of looked at the father of federal national parks. He was a big nature junkie, even though he was a New Yorker. It's been years um, out in traveling uh, to different parts of, of the United States and looking at all the amazing geography we have here. But yeah, he really kind of um, pushed that, the creation of federal uh, parks and uh, national parks. And I think that's great. Give the federal Love government exclusive jurisdiction over Yellowstone National Park. And state law doesn't apply there. Later, when Congress created the federal district court for Wyoming, it placed the entire park under that jurisdiction. That means that things that happen in Montana and Idaho on park lands are within the Wyoming district court's jurisdiction. However, Article 3, Section 2 of the Constitution requires that the trial be held in the state in which the crime was committed. This sets up the legal basis okay. for getting away with murder if you commit a crime in Yellowstone National Park in Idaho. And moreover, the what? Sixth Amendment requires the impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed. This seems like something that like mobsters figured out. Mobsters, right? So theoretically, the only people available for the jury must live in the Idaho section of Yellowstone National Park. The thing is, no one lives on the 50 square miles of federal land that make up this zone in Idaho. So you can see Wonder how why it's there anyways. Is. Like Okay, so that border, it seems like, you know, I don't I don't know exactly how the borders were thrown up around Wyoming, but it seems like they would just use that kind of 90 degree angle in the northwest, even though it's 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 serviced and overseen by the federal government. You wouldn't have to have, you know, like Wyoming involved at all or sorry, uh, Idaho involved at all or even Montana for that matter, because all the the good stuff is around Yellowstone Lake there. So. It's yeah. on the map. And since no humans live there, only these Idaho otters can judge you. And this is why that area has been nicknamed the zone of death. The Wyoming has federal ever court has jurisdiction, but if you though? want to go to trial, the Wyoming court simply doesn't have jurisdiction. And although Cult tried to get Congress to fix this loophole, they haven't done anything. How did they even know? Shocker. And that loophole still exists. Oh, so gosh. if you want to visit the Idaho portion of Yellowstone National Park, Idaho is just dying to meet you. Oh, gosh. <laughs>
Yeah, moderate Republicans. 1776 to 2016. The right to run Wait, what? Idaho is just dying to meet you. I don't get the joke. Someone explain down in the comments. The right to run. What do I have to do with Yellowstone? 2016 Trump election? Okay, well, yeah, that was creepy, actually. Uh, the right to run for governor of Kansas as a teen, a dog, or a resident of another state. Okay. What if you're a teenage dog from another state? You could do that. This reminds me of that. Was it Alaska that had like that cat mayor, Mayor Stubbs or whatever? Run for governor of Kansas as right? a teen dog or resident of another state. Actually like in elected Kansas, almost cat. anyone can be governor. In Kansas, you can run for governor before you're even eligible to vote. The state has absolutely no qualifications for gubernatorial candidates. In 2018, Is seven the only teenagers, one? all boys, ran for Kansas governor. The director of elections at the Kansas Secretary of State's office said, How do you do? There's seriously nothing on the books that lays out anything, no no age, no residency, no experience, nothing. Okay. This I, was I can just show by up Ballotpedia, there? the website which tracks all things related to state and federal offices. Ballotpedia concludes that Kansas's constitution When's Mr. Beat going to run for governor of Kansas? For office. Cool. That means that even a baby could run for governor. Someone alert Alec Baldwin about yeah. a possible extension of the Boss <laughs> Baby Cinematic Universe. I may look like a baby, but I was born all grown up. The baby. Lower taxes on toys. <laughs> this is amazing for many reasons, including the fact that former Kansas Secretary of State Chris Kobach has spent the last five years stoking fears about mass voter fraud and championing extremely restrictive voter Dude, see, that's laws. the thing. In today's day and age, somebody could, that could totally be a meme thing, right? They vote some kid with the power of the internet right now. It would not, I would not bet against like an election like this happening just for the, the lulls. Totally could happen. If it's not on the list, it doesn't exist. In fact, Kobach briefly ran President Trump's election commission, which was supposed to prove that President Trump actually won the popular vote in 2016. The commission disbanded after it found no Did evidence not. of voter fraud. Kobach wanted it to be harder to vote the than he proposed few times a federal that's law happened. requiring people to have proof of American citizenship when they showed up at the polls. But during his time as Secretary of State, he never made any recommendations about the state's non-existent requirements to run for governor. Mm. Kansas legislators immediately started discussing ways to clarify the law, but nothing stopped the election with the teens from moving forward. And there's also no residency requirement, so candidates from Vermont and New York threw their hats into the ring as well. It's not even clear that a person has to be human to qualify for Kansas governor. <laughs> the director of elections said that although but, no dog has ever attempted to run, there's yeah. no law specifically stating that a candidate has to be human. So but, but could you still ever, I was saying, could you some how do it on behalf of a dog. You have to be able to sign and have consent, right? Unless you could teach a dog to do that. No, sign. Stella the legal beagle will be legal filing laws her paperwork legal for 2022. Permissions, I don't know. The right to write on U.S. currency. Speaking of good or bad government, let's talk about the U.S. Treasury specifically. Got bills money. With have you ever felt it? like writing on money but worried about that pesky thing called a felony? Well, don't fret because you've got a right to deface U.S. currency. The common belief that you can't write on or market bills is actually a misinterpretation of United States Code. Title 18, Part 1, Chapter 17, I Section vaguely remember 333, hearing about that. which states, Whoever mutilates, cuts, defaces, disfigures, or perforates, or unites, or cements together, or does any other thing to any bank, bill, draft, note, or other evidence of debt issued by any National Banking Association or Federal Reserve Bank or the Federal Reserve System with intent to render such bank, bill, draft, note, or other evidence of debt unfit to be reissued shall be fined under this title or imprisoned by not more than six months or both. <laughs> I did it. This crime boils down to... I've received bills where people have doodled on it, though. Doodle on Washington's eyes or like something with the pyramid, do some like Illuminati stuff. You know what I mean? Intent. Did you intend to render the bill unfit to be reissued? If not, then no harm, no foul. Much it's bigger problem is counterfeiting, right? You ever see that go to go to stores and stuff? And, you know, I remember I was I worked retail before, like before, you know, I was a teacher in college and stuff. And you had these you had pens, these like markers and you would um, strike them. So you might see, well, you might see a bill that has like what looks like a Sharpie mark on it. And that's because there's like, yeah, there's like markers that can detect um, if it's on like the wrong paper. I don't know if that still works with modern bills and stuff. I haven't been a cashier for a long time, but any of you guys that are cashiers, do you have a method like that, that like we were supposed to do it, I think with bills, I think above 20 or, or something like that when I was working. Not as if every time a, a bill cashier. has markings on it, it's removed from circulation. So feel free to draw a beard on Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> it may be dumb, but you can still spend that $100 dollar bill, y'all. <laughs> I got a $100 bill, y'all. 
when is a bill unfit? If it's torn, dirty, limp, worn, yeah. or defaced. According to the Federal Reserve, a bill is unfit if it has excessive holes, tears, tape, or yeah, excessive they, just, they have to destroy a lot so, of money. A black eye on George Washington is probably okay, but a torn in half bill is probably not. Yeah. Not that there's any reason why you should be tearing up your own money. But there's a, I remember... I don't know if it was true, but I thought I had heard there was a uh, a bill could be used at, if it was torn at a certain fraction, like three fourths of it, maybe like if three fourths of it um, is intact, then the bill is legit. I don't know if it was that or like a third or something like that. I feel like it was more than a half. Anybody know that that fraction? Money's better when you can spend it. Hashtag not legal advice. Hashtag common sense. The right to give your children alcohol. Oh, no. Philosopher William Smith Wait, famously observed how? that parents just don't understand. But just because Carlton and Viv parents and don't Phil do this, square please. doesn't mean that all parents are narcs. Massachusetts parents will absolutely fight for your right to party. Chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it, chug it. That's why the legal drinking age in Massachusetts is 21, and it's illegal to provide alcohol to minors unless they are your children or grandchildren. Please excuse my parents' behavior. They ate a lot of paint chips growing up. The Commonwealth Social Host Law makes it illegal to buy alcohol or host parties where underage people drink. However, there is an exception for the host children and grandchildren who may be served booze on the host's private property. And there's no age limit here, so if you want to give your toddler scotch, knock yourself out. Again, don't actually do that. Hashtag not legal advice. Well, there was like that old timey thing where like you had a toothache. If someone had a toothache or like a baby was teething or something, you'd get a little whiskey or something on your finger. This is like old timey stuff and like rub it on their gums and their teeth. That, I think that was like a Great Depression era. Probably stopped after that. But I remember hearing that hearing that that was a thing. You know? But this isn't quite as crazy. Because it's probably cheaper than getting like actual medicine, especially in the Great Depression. Uh, there was plenty of booze everywhere, okay, the Depression. In fact, that was one of the, some of the highest alcoholism rates we ever had. It's actually really sad um, how many bars and stuff were not affected by the Depression, and people just kept drinking away, you know, caused all those domestic issues that eventually leads to prohibition. But then we find out Americans could not live without alcohol, and people were moonshining it anyways, and they needed taxing, right? Uh, and that's actually why prohibition ends up ending during the Great Depression was money. As it sounds on its face. Some experts who advise state legislatures on responsible drinking say that prohibition just doesn't work and kids need to learn the right habits from their parents. Drinking alcohol with parents, quote, may help teach them responsible drinking habits or extinguish some of the novelty or excitement no. of drinking. That's according to Dr. Christy Long Foley at the School of Medicine at Wake Forest University. But I, they've also, I, I, you know, I've heard that the, er, the younger somebody is exposed to alcohol, the more likely they are to become an alcoholic as well. So, yeah, I'm glad he keeps saying not actual legal advice. Yeah. And Massachusetts is far from alone in permitting parents to make this decision. Other states let underage people drink too, like Alaska, California, Colorado, Delaware, Hawaii, Illinois, Iowa, Louisiana, Maine, Maryland, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, New Hampshire, Nevada, New Jersey, New Mexico, New York, Ohio, Oregon, Pennsylvania, Rhode now, it's Island, more than South Dakota, what Texas, you think. Virginia, Washington, and Wyoming. Not just, Plus, in some places, yeah. people can get married before the legal drinking age. So 12 states say that you can drink with your spouse if you were under the rules, age of okay. 21. But when it comes to drinking, there's something special about Massachusetts. It is, not surprisingly, illegal to give someone alcohol or drugs if they're in a hospital suffering from an alcohol or drug-related problem, unless <laughs> the physician says it's okay. Because in Boston, doctors know that the best cure for a hangover is the hair of the dog that bit you. I know there's a Red Sox joke in there somewhere. <laughs> But since I'm not John Krasinski, despite what you read in the comments, I can <laughs> confirm that the Red Sox are the worst. Just the worst. But I like the Red Sox. you have the right to love them the Red Sox. and the right to be wrong. But All right. So you titled the video was rights you didn't know you had and probably don't want. I don't think I learned about any new rights here that I'm actually going to practice. <laughs> in fact, it just a lot of these just made me want to tell whoever can fix these to basically strike all of these down because they were basically all bad ideas. <laughs> so, yes, hashtag not legal advice. With that, we'll see you all next time. Bye.